Welcome to the August 2015 episode of Iowa City in Focus. I'm your host, Mary Bryant. Welcome back, students. As always, Iowa City has some great opportunities waiting for you that you won't want to miss. On this month's episode, I'll talk with Betsy Potter about the mission of the Iowa City Downtown District and what's coming up for them this month. Then we'll check out Iowa City's very own International Women's Club for a glimpse of their activities as well. Stay tuned. Today I'm talking with Betsy Potter, the Operations Director of the Iowa City Downtown District and we're talking about some things that are coming up for the Iowa City Downtown District. So Betsy, can you start off, tell me what the main goals of the Iowa City Downtown District are. Sure, the Iowa City Downtown District, we work to create the most positive environment for downtown possible. So we work for our property owners, our business owners, and the community, just making downtown a really great place so that it's clean, safe, and fun to be in. It sounds like that a lot of people are involved then. Yeah, well, there's three of us on staff. <laughs> there is Nancy Bird, our executive director. Nate Kading is our retail development director. And then me, the dir operations director. And then we have a great board of directors. And then obviously all of our businesses also mm -hmm. come together and help us. So there's a lot of people, just a small staff. Okay, so I hear that coming up this month is Taste of Iowa City. Yes, it'll be the ninth annual Taste of Iowa City on August 26th and that's in combination with the University of Iowa's Welcome Back Week. So it's part of their programming for Welcome Back Week. It's also a community event and it's sponsored by Midwest One Bank and I can kind of go over what the Please. event is, but uh, everybody, the community and students are welcome to come down and it's kind of a great festival atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's a real tasting of everything Iowa City has to offer. So all of our businesses set up outside of their business and they serve sample sizes of what you would normally would see on their menu. Mm -hmm. You buy tickets and you turn in your tickets for the samples. So we normally have between four and 5,000 people join us for that event. <laughs> yeah, for a four to for a four hour event. And it's all over the Ped Mall, all over the Northside Marketplace, all over downtown. If if you see someone set up outside, they're part of Taste of Iowa City that night. And will tickets be available that day or are you encouraging people to buy ahead? Yes, well both. We have a lot of tickets available at our ticket booths, that's for sure. A lot of people like to get them the night of or they haven't bought enough so they want to get more. Mm -hmm. um, and then the University of Iowa gives away 5,000 tickets that night to their students. So you have to come with your student ID and you get five free tickets. And then ahead of time, starting in the a few weeks earlier than the event, then Midwest One will be selling tickets ahead of time at their downtown branch. So you can always get them ahead of time if you want to avoid the lines and get them. That's a great way to welcome students back or for students uh, who are coming for the first time. Yeah, and it's a great community event too. Mm -hmm. We welcome everybody down, but really it's a chance for the students to get to know what we have to offer restaurant-wise sure. downtown Iowa City and then you can also visit the retailers and it's just a really fun night especially because the weather is always normally pretty nice and there's entertainment and this year we're going to incorporate a couple different entertainment features so yet to be determined I can't wait to see they that. will be yeah out on August 26 so you'll have to come down do you have anything else uh, coming up? Yeah, so our Benchmarks uh, program, Benchmarks 4.0, that's is sponsored by the University of Iowa Community Credit Union, and that's been going on all summer long. And if anybody's been down in the Ped Mall, you've probably seen there are so many great benches this year. Beautiful. 25 artists have painted 25 benches in downtown, and they are just spectacular. Probably some of the greatest art we've seen. And there's voting going on. So the public is asked to vote on your favorite bench. And you can go to downtowniowacity.com and vote. And you can only vote for one out of your favorite bench. So you're gonna have to take a look at them. We have posters available at the Iowa City Public Library and there's you know a vinyl downtown. So if you wanna look at them, but really the best way to look at them is to come down and kind of walk around. And then you can submit your vote online or you can submit it at the Iowa City Public Library. And then at the end of August and then September 1st, we're gonna collect all the votes, count them, and then uh, announce the winners. Oh, what fun. Yeah, it is a really great feature. We did this last year, but we had so many votes. We had over 6,000 people vote on their favorite bench. So we're doing it again this year. That's great. Yeah. 
So there is just so much going on downtown Iowa City. Um, how can people learn more throughout the year or just whenever they want to come down? Sure, the best way is obviously to check our website at downtowniowacity.com. We have a full events calendar that lists all the events that are going on in the Ped Mall, in the Northside Marketplace, in the, our various entertainment venues. And then we always have our announcements that we you know, like to call to action mm -hmm. on our website. And then we have a great newsletter that comes out every week. So if you're looking to be reminded of the things going on, you can sign up for that again on our website. So downtowniowacity.com or our Facebook page, we're on Twitter, Instagram, just look up Downtown Iowa City and we're everywhere. So That's great. Thank you so much yeah, for talking with you. me today, Betsy. Now let's take a visit to the International Women's Club, a group that not only provides English classes during the fall and spring semesters, but is also focused on bringing together women of all cultures to share activities and promote friendship and understanding. Generally, we, we just say, fine, fine, thank you. And it's, it's a greeting and a fun thing to say. Is that similar in your own cultures? <laughs> the mission of the International Women's Club is for women from every country, including the United States, to make friends, to learn, and to enjoy life in Iowa City. Our purpose is to help women who are new to town to get to know the place and the people, but also more than that, to get to know people from many parts of the world, to learn about different cultures and ideas. And we are happy to have women here for any reason and for any length of time. International Women's Club was started by a two faculty wives more than 50 years ago now and it gradually grew from there. The activities of the club way, range very widely. You know about English classes because that is kind of the one of the cornerstones of the activities but it's not our only activity by any means because there are many women who really don't need English classes but they still need company and experience of Iowa City. So we have coffee group once a month at the members' homes. We have cooking group where people try out new recipes from a variety of different countries and learn about different cuisines. We have groups that meet for lunch once a month and even for supper once a month. That's for the ladies who are working all day. We have a pumpkin carving party, which is always tremendous fun because, of course, many of our members have never seen a pumpkin before. We have a winter party where Santa Claus somehow always seems to show up and everybody loves that. And other activities more varied during the spring. Last month, for example, we, we had a kite flying uh, excellent, which a lot of families enjoyed. And then in the summertime, we have a birthday party for everybody, which is a family party where we give ourselves a little birthday treat. In November, we started many, many years ago doing not a Thanksgiving dinner, though most people serve turkey, but we have a November dinner. The meal is not a typical Thanksgiving dinner. There may be turkey, but the side dishes could be bulgogi from Korea. They could be Japanese dish uh, for an appetizer, sushi for example. These things make it a true international dinner. We always have them in the evening. And the idea is that the women sometimes dress up and can come out without children, without husbands, but this gives them one evening where they can come out on their own and do something very pleasant. And I am one of the many English uh, teachers in our English classes, and I also have cooking group once a month in my house, which is what is happening today. It's a way to uh, learn about uh, cooking in other countries, and each month uh, one woman or a group of women prepares food uh, from their own country in front of everybody, uh, so you have a chance to watch them make it, you have a chance to taste it, and then you go home with a recipe. So it's a great way to learn about new uh, kinds of cooking. Many of our women don't feel comfortable going outside the house because of their limited English, and so we provide 
not just uh, a way for them to learn English, but also a way for them to meet people. So you can gather just about anything that a woman might like to join others in doing, we will do. And we are largely guided by the interests of the, the women themselves. When something is suggested, for example, we just had a, a cultural sharing day, which was a new activity. Many of our nationality groups had a table and showed their beautiful artifacts and history and culture and also food, which was very enjoyable. This was an activity which was suggested not by the board, but by members themselves. So this is the way we work. We have women who have been living here for almost 10 years who uh, are extremely limited in what they can do because they haven't had the opportunity to learn English. For someone in a foreign country can't speak English, everything is really frightening. You never feel safe. At the moment we have six or seven classes and we have more than one teacher in each class. We try to give the women as much uh, opportunity to speak as they can. Anyone can come, anyone can bring their children, and we have daycare for the children. We are a club for women, and we have women who are refugees, women from Congo, women from Sudan. This is important for them. The fact that we are the only English class program that offers childcare is extremely important because many women could not take English classes unless they bring their children and this allows them to do so. When we moved here, uh, I didn't uh, know anybody. We came for some party with women's club and I just uh, love these people who helped me, teach me English. This is an amazing experience to have this chance to meet people and friendly people who help you. Here I get so many friends, I talk to them, I know about the American culture. The people who are doing volunteer job here, they are doing very well and they help us a lot to settle down here. I really think that the English classes has uh, uh, three purposes. One is to learn English, one is to make friends and one is to be a resource. I think particularly this year, I have noticed women in my class, they have been living here for quite a while without meeting an American, talking to an American, without getting out of the house much. So I feel that this is really vital for people like that. In a way, uh, the International Women's Club is a showcase for the Iowa City community because many of the activities that we undertake are helping women to integrate into the community as it exists and get to know services. For example, we take groups to the public libraries and we sometimes go to local activities so that as well as being a way for women to find their feet, it's also a way for them to become part of the Iowa City, Coralville, North Liberty general community, I would say. Sometimes I think U.S. women look at their title, International Women's Club, and they say, oh, I'm not an international woman, I can't come. It means everyone. The only thing we require is that you be a woman. I do it because it helps me. I do it because every day I go to International Women's Club, I smile. I'm always learning. Uh, when you're teaching, you're learning, and particularly when you're teaching women from different backgrounds, you're always learning things about other countries, and that's what gives me uh, a real satisfaction. You can watch all of these segments again at citychannel4.com video, or by turning to Channel 5 and calling into Video On Demand. Also, we would like to know what other city departments or programs you would like to hear more about. Let us know by sending an email to info at citychannel4.com or by leaving a comment on the City Channel 4 Facebook page at facebook.com slash citychannel4. Thanks for watching and keeping Iowa City in focus. I'll see you around. You're watching City Channel 4. 
on TV, online, on demand, on Facebook, and now on the go on your mobile device.